And there we go. Our first win within a Stride Crimson Valley. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code itresolves10yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody? And guess what? Yes, it is time. We have got Innistrad Crimson Val available on Arena. You know we had to jump in immediately with Rakdos Vampires. There could be no other choice. Uh, and so we're going to give this a shot today. Before we do, if you are new here, if you haven't already entered, please subscribe to the channel. That's going to enter you to win a free Crimson Val bundle on November 24th. You can also check out some of our other platforms. If you follow there, you have a better chance to win. So just as a quick heads up, we'd encourage you all to check that out. And welcome to all you new fine folks. Let's talk about today's deck, guys. It is Rakdos Vampires, so obviously with Crimson Vale, we got some big new vampires. We had to test them out today, so uh, I'm actually going to start at the reverse end. Initially, this deck was taken, I believe, from MTG Zone, uh, and I kind of fiddled with it just a little bit because I did want to include at least one Olivia Crimson Bride, one of the biggest new cards from the new set, uh, a 3-4 for 6 with Flying and Haste. When it attacks, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Uh, it gains when you don't control a legendary vampire creature, exile this creature. So the idea being that this is kind of a built-in reanimator spell. So assuming we lose some of our vampires along the way, we can just bring them back with Crimson Bride, uh, which is kind of sick. This can also, of course, just get in there for an attack very quickly, which is helpful uh, and deal those last few points of damage. Uh, Henrika Domnathi, I hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, a 1-3 for 4 with flying. At the beginning of combat on your turn, choose one that hasn't been chosen. Each player sacrifices a creature, you draw a card, lose a life, or transform it. Uh, when you transform it, it has flying, death touch, and lifelink. It's also a 3-4. You can pay 1 and 2 black. Each creature you control with flying, uh, death touch, and or lifelink gets plus 1 plus 0 until the end of the turn. Worth noting, that is a good mana sink for us. You can and activate that multiple times which is great of course florian is in here this is one we've had before but this is going to help us uh hopefully play a couple extra spells per turn if we can do it uh so a fantastic one there uh, Falcon Wrath Forebear, a 3 1 for 3 flying camp block. When it deals combat damage to a player, though, we get to create a blood token, one of the new mechanics brought to us with Crimson Val. Uh, this is dedicated mostly to vampires. You can tap, uh, pay one, tap it, draw, discard a card, sacrifice it, and then draw a card. Now, that sounds like a lot for drawing a card, uh, but the idea is very simple that this is going to help us prolong the game and get more things in our hand. Now, I know we have to discard a card to do that. But keep in mind, we have a lot of cards in the two and maybe three drop slot here, but not a lot at the top end. So if we stack up on lands or if we're, we don't have a creature in the graveyard, we can discard it with the blood token and then get it back with Olivia. We've got options here, uh, which makes that uh, blood token really, really high value. Now, you can also pay a black sacrifice to blood tokens and return this from your graveyard to the battlefield. So again, a bit of reanimator focus with that. Uh, we've got the the two and two split of Flunk and Infernal Grasp, just to give some options here. Nothing too crazy, just some nice removal. Uh, Voldaren Bloodcaster, a two one for two with flying. When it or another non-token creature you control dies, you create a blood token. And then if you create a blood token and you control five or more, transform it into a three three flyer at the beginning of combat on your turn. Up to one target blood token you control becomes a two two black bat creature with flying and haste in addition to its other types. Now keep in mind. We can, theoretically, buff up all of our creatures with flying, which really, really works out uh, well with the Bloodgaster. Uh, Blood Tithe Harvester, a 2 mana, 3, 2. When it enters the battlefield, create a blood token, sacrifice it, and tap it. Target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is twice the number of tokens you control. Activate only as a sorcery. Some built-in removal for us, and we can also, of course, bring it back. Uh, Vampire Socialite, we've had this here before. Uh, just gives us some 1-1 counters, things like that. 
Falconrath Pit Fighter again, just some nice card draw for us. We do have to discard a card, but it's worth it. And then play with fire for a little bit of extra removal, just being able to ping something there. Uh, really, really good. We do have both the red and black uh, man lands here. So we've got a little bit of extra power there. And that's about it, guys. This is going to be fun. I cannot wait. This is our first experience with Innistrad Crimson Val. Let's have some fun with it, guys. Let's see what we can do. We'll jump into game one right now. And here we are, guys, uh, and I'm actually really liking this hand. So we've got some really good stuff here. I think we'll just go ahead and uh, keep this. Uh, the Blood Tithe Harvester might just be the best card we can get on turn two. It's just so good on its own. Uh, that it kind of demands some reaction to it. Um, now, that's not always the case, but it is quite interesting. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and play with Fire This. Let's just get it off the field. Understandably, we don't need to kill it right away, but uh, we do want to be as efficient as possible with this kind of deck. The trick with this is that you want to be playing threats as much or as as often as possible. Uh, and then those removal spells, you want to take the opportunity when you can get them because nine times out of ten, most of your mana is going to go to uh, some kind of creature spell each turn. So it's totally fine. Uh, obviously not great, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Hopefully get this going next turn. Uh, and the idea being this is going to start creating some of those blood tokens that we can, of course, use to get bigger and better cards later on. Um, now they may have a removal spell for this. I don't know. They could also just be reading it. We don't know. Um, but let's see what they got. Okay. Uh, oh, ho. interesting. Okay. Um, well, we've got some options this turn, so let's first things first. Let's get an attack in. Now, we can Infernal Grasp on the Adeline, which I kind of like. Uh, the reason being, whenever it attacks each opponent, you, you basically are going to start creating extra things. So I'm going to take the opportunity and kill this now. Just get it off the field. If we would like, we can, of course, sacrifice one of our blood tokens here. We don't have to, but we certainly can. Uh, sure. Uh, I don't think we want to... I think we kind of just want to leave these on the field just so we have extra tokens later for the forebear. Uh, I feel like that's probably worth it. Um, looks like they may not have anything else to do, which is fantastic. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, let's go ahead and attack in. Um, yep. And I think we're actually going to take the socialite play. Uh, the reason being, this is going to power this forebear up but on top of that, it also just sets us up quite well for a follow-up turn. Now, this is actually kind of interesting because what we can do is discard the forebear, uh, and then in res uh, or at the following turn, basically play it for a lot cheaper, uh, which I kind of like. Uh, we'll see. That seems kind of good to me. Um, now, I do want to mention, obviously, this is a new set. We have never played with these cards before. So we're, we're all going to be doing a bit of learning in the first few days, as we always do. Uh, and that's perfectly fine. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, we'll discard you. Oh, and there's a flunk. That's actually quite good. Uh, that allows us to get rid of some things here if we'd like. Uh, ooh. <laughs> uh, this gives us an option for killing our opponent. Uh, with the blood tokens here, which is quite good. Um, let's first thing first things first. Let's get an attack in here. Now the question becomes: Do we want to flunk this? I truthfully think we kind of have to. Um, uh, yeah, I think we kind of have to. The the intrepid adversary is just going to get out of hand very quickly, and it's very hard for us to fight the life gain. Uh, that's something that isn't easy for us to get past. So I feel like we need to probably force that a little bit here. Um, now, of course, they are going to get a very strong attack in here, which is kind of fine. I mean, it's not great for us, but it's not the end of the world either. Uh, yeah. Sure. Um, not going to block quite yet. Uh, we're obviously going to take seven here, go down to eight. That's OK. It's not great, but it's fine. Uh, this can't block. We do have to keep that in mind. Uh, yes. All right, uh, let's... Let's attack in with this. 
All right, and then let's go ahead and throw this out here. This is just a big card. Uh, now that it does come into play with the token, thanks to the socialite, it's just big, uh, which is quite good for us. Uh, it just means that they're not going to have a solid attack. Now, they can put a counter on the Faceless Haven, but that's not good enough, actually. So they do kind of have to remove this. Um, oh, very nice. So the correct play is the Forebear. Uh, just because we can't play Olivia anyway, and chances are this game is going to be over sooner than we could have played that. Um, so I would have personally just played the Forebear, uh, just to get it out of the hand and a little bit more challenging to discard, but that's fine. Uh, that does give a counter here. Oh, and they are going to attack. Um, so they can deal six. So we do kind of need to block here. Um, I think we do that. Is that correct? Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, there is a play with fire, which is really, really good for us here. Um, I will go ahead and do that here. Now keep in mind, uh, the forebear cannot block, so we do have to keep that in the back of our hand here. So let's attack here. Okay. Um, create another token. I think we'll just play the, the forebear from our hand here. Uh, and let's see what happens. I mean, worth noting, these forebears cannot block, uh, and we are very light on lands here, so we're kind of banking on them not being able to get five points of damage in, which isn't unreasonable, truthfully. Um, I think we can manage that. They only drew a land. They're only going to be able to place a token, uh, which means we actually get to win this coming turn, actually. Uh, yeah. So, we just get to attack in, guys. And there we go, our first win within a Astrog Crimson Vow. I love it. Let's see what we can do in game two. All right, guys, here we are for game two. Again, have a fantastic starting hand here with the Harvester. Uh, and I think this is a pretty easy keep for us. So let's see what we can do. Um, I'm really liking this Vampires list already. We do have so much support for the Vampires. All those blood tokens are really, really crucial. Uh, that's a very good card, but one we can certainly deal with. I am going to take the opportunity to just go ahead and play the Harvester here, though. I'm not going to worry about killing this quite yet. Obviously, they can disturb this back out, uh, as soon as we do. Um, it looks like we're against a life gain deck, if I had to assume. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, let's do this. Um... Let's do this. I'm going to throw this out there. Uh, and I think I'm actually going to go ahead and get an attack in here. We do want to keep them moving down the list on the life gain end because uh, that's something. Yeah, Righteous Valkyrie, that's the danger. Uh, so that's what we're scared of. My apologies if you hear my dog in the background. <laughs> um, all right, so let's do this. Let's do this and see what they do. I'm very curious. Okay. Now we are trading two for one here a little bit, but uh, actually, I mean, we can just do this, which I kind of like. All right. Um, and then I think I will just go ahead and do this. Uh, we'll sacrifice the two blood tokens and bring this back. I really like that play. Uh, that seemed pretty good. Now, we don't have any more blood tokens, which isn't exactly ideal, but that's okay. Ooh, very nice. Uh, whenever you attack, put a 1-1 counter. Okay. So it's a 2-4. Um, I think we just take two. It's literally just two damage. Like, we don't... There's no added benefit for them, so I feel like that's actually okay. Um, let's attack him for five here. Get that token. We'll do this, and we'll do this. And now we're at the point where we have enough stuff out that we should be able to keep the damage pressure going. We can also start activating these, uh, 
these manlands to help kind of secure that win. Now they're gaining some life, of course, which is going to be annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Worth noting, we can only harvest her as a sorcery, so we can't just go in here and start, you know, killing everything. Um, I'm going to say no blocks. We're going to take the four. Another land, you say. Okay. So worth noting, um, we could do this uh, at some point. Activate only if an opponent lost life this turn. That's fine. Um, I'm going to create some tokens here. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's do this. We do have to discard a card. Now, again, this is where we have to do a lot just to get a little, but, um, it kind of works out okay. I'm gonna go ahead and kill this. Uh, that's gonna transform here. We can play this out, and then we can play this out. Um, now, I'm not sequencing this 100% correctly, I am sure, but... Uh, that actually set us up quite nicely for a very good follow-up turn. Um, sure. One target blood token you control becomes that. Okay, that's so good. I feel like this card is so good once you flip it. Um, it just allows you to get that damage race going even more. Uh, yeah. I guess we can discard a card too here. Let's, uh, let's take that opportunity. Let's just see what we get. If we get like a play with fire or something, that would be kind of nice. We did not. That's fine. Um, we can do it again, uh, which I'm kind of okay with because it's a forebear and we can just replay it. <laughs> Ooh, socialite is quite good. So this is where those blood tokens are really at a premium is in this style deck, obviously. Um, we can just do so much with it. All right. Uh, obviously going to do this. Let's get the attack in. Or quite a bit. Um, get him down to five. That's very good. Uh, let's play the socialite. Puts everything above. Um, <laughs> all right. And there we go. Two wins undefeated so far. Let's go at least one, one more game here. We'll see how long we go. I want to get to multiple decks as early as we can because there's so many good ones out there. So let's see what we can do. All right, guys, here we are. Let's see what we can do. Uh, this is a rough keep. Uh, it's not great. We're going to have to make a decision here, um, which I don't love, but uh, I think that's just what we're going to have to do. Uh, opponent being so polite. I love that. Um, I'm going to gamble. This is not... So basically what we're having to do is choose between the pit fighter and the harvester here. I chose the Pit Fighter. Uh, that could very easily be incorrect, um, but I figure, you know what? Let's go for it. Get an attack in here for two. Uh, and we can actually, if they lose life, I guess we can activate this later on just to draw some stuff. Ooh, okay. Uh, that's very annoying actually. So yeah, that's very good. Um, we'll do this. Um, we can play with fire at some point here. Um, I think we'll just pass. Let's see what they do. This shuts down, um, a lot of our decks, so we are going to want to kill this at some point, but because it's a legendary creature, they could very easily have more in their hands, so we're going to kind of want to do it when it makes sense to, uh, yeah, interesting. Okay. Now, if they attack in, we have a decision to make, um, and they are going to attack in. Hmm. I'm going to try and take this block, uh, because if they just replay, we can play with fire the the Denric, the Denic, not Denric, uh, the apparition side of it. Oh, even better. Um, yeah, I'm just going to kill that. Let's get that out of there. We don't particularly want to uh, die to things like that. All right. Um, 
Let's go ahead and get this going, uh, and let's get an attack in. This is just a big bad vampire, man. Made of dishonor. Look at that, that's so sick. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, very good, uh, for sure. But we should be able to still kind of take some wins here. Um, I'm gonna do this. Let's just see what happens here. Let's get some goblins out. They can block this one, that's fine. Um, or they can block the pit fighter. No, they're gonna do this. Okay. Oh, interesting. That really doesn't bother me that much because we've got multiple of these and now we have a 4-4. So that's cool. Um, we're kind of just forcing their hand as much as we can here. Vega. Interesting. What a interesting deck this is. Um... <laughs> All right. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Uh, each player sacks a creature. I'll sacrifice this. They're going to probably sack their little 1-1 one -one here. Um, I'm just going to attack with both. If they want to block the pit fighter, great. Doesn't look like they want to. Um, they're obviously trying for a good spirits list here which I think is definitely a deck I want to try. Um, I don't know how good it is, I'll be honest. Uh, I mean, it definitely got some support, don't get me wrong. So I'm curious, but uh, at the moment, doesn't seem, I mean, they could very easily take the win. I am not trying to uh, diminish that by any means, but uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, we do have the dens here, so we can just start throwing more damage at them with those. Um, okay, aggressive. I like it. Land is very good. Um, I'm just going to activate this. We have that Blood Tithe uh, Harvester at some point here, but I kind of don't think we need it quite yet. Um, okay, cool. It's a good bit of damage that they just took. Um, they're down to three. Okay, yeah, that's pretty sick. Um, I mean, that's very good. And they are not gonna attack. All right. Hmm. We can get some damage in. We can't get a lot of damage in. So I think what we're gonna do take the opportunity just to build up the board we can't even technically attack with the 4-4 which is a little annoying um, but the harvester is going to give us an out to kill the ghost forge and then allow us to attack in um, and on top of that we can still activate the bugbear afterwards so we'll see um, little little concerned with what they might have if they can kill the harvester we're not in a great position we do have some card draw with us obviously so there's some options if we just like brick with a land um we can discard a card sacrifice the blood uh or of course we can sack a vampire and do the the falcon wrath pit fighter move um either way is fine uh it's just determines how much mana we have left available and how many cards we draw uh, but basically it's one mana to draw a card which is quite good I, w I should say to cycle a card, because truthfully, you still have to discard a card or kill a creature to do it. Um, and I, I don't know. The Falconrath Pit Fighters are very uh, good, but they don't seem very efficient. Uh, opponent really taking their time. Curious to see what they're doing. This will probably be our last game with the Vampires list, guys. Just a quick heads up. Uh, oh, no, I think something disconnected. I'm. I'm betting, because uh, the timer is just running down here. Uh, let's just give them a quick hello and see see if they're there. Uh, I'm assuming they disconnected. Um, if I pause the video here, or if we move on from here, because uh, I'll probably, I, I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and skip ahead, so you'll see it cut at some point here. 
All right, guys, we ended up having to close the game down there. Uh, we are still in the phase of like phasing everything out for this, so that does make a lot of sense. But I'm going to call that a fairly con uh, it wasn't 100 percent a win, so I can't I can't say it was undefeated, but it was pretty close. Uh, vampires, Rakdos Vampires, very, very good. Oh, my goodness. Um, I feel like I have so many more options than just a basic aggro deck. There's the blood tokens add a little bit of a like not only a secondary win condition, uh, but it also gives you an option for drawing further into your deck. Uh, on top of the Falcon Wrath Pit Fighter, which does a very similar job, uh, it's very overly aggressive, of course, which is exactly what you want, but it doesn't lose out completely on the card draw aspect, which is generally where that style deck uh, really falls short. Uh, and so I really like it. Now, obviously, this is only a few games, so I don't want to just blanket statement say this is going to be the best thing ever. We're just getting into this uh, new standard season uh so keep that in mind but i really think vampires are pretty well supported obviously in this brand new set uh, as we all expected. So I'm very happy to report that. Very, very fun deck. I encourage you to give it a shot. We'll have more gameplay videos up as soon as we possibly can. There's a lot that we want to get to with this one. Uh, so hopefully we'll see you again very soon for some more gameplay videos. But thanks so much for watching, guys. I love you all. We'll see you again very soon.